my question to you is like, how do you find the emotional connection with a film and the song? So it is a thing that is always sort of the, uh, the hardest part of our job, which is how do you reinvent yourself every time? How do, you, how do you make an emotional connection? We all know that when it works, it's lightning in a bottle, it's, it's jet fuel, and we try to do it over and over again. And there's no right or wrong way. It, it comes to the material, it comes to the director, and then really then it's about how you move people. It's a tall order. How do you move people? So it's a difficult task, but it's one that I embrace every day because I get to get out of bed and make that my first thought, which is what are we going to do today to like make a real impact? How do you approach a piece of music? Every artist you work with is an incredible platinum artist. They move people, and the only way they're going to move it is if your mix does that final job. Mixing is an art form. We can actually create emotion from equipment. For most of you, when we say 1K, that may mean nothing. But to engineers, show me what 1K means. And if there's 20 engineers in the room, they'll, they'll show you the same facial expression. They'll go, <laughs> yeah. They go, all right, show me 100 hertz. They'll, they'll, they'll all do the same thing. And it's a, it's a reminder of how frequencies have emotion. You know, and I discovered that when I was 15, and I was immediately in love with the art of, of it. How do you deal with all the egos in the room when you're working on a record to make sure that it's still going to come out the best that you think it's going to be? You know, the ego, and we've talked about this with Dave a lot, where to me the ego is a sheet, right? It's a sheet in front of you that you can see through, but you can't see clearly, right? So for anybody that has an ego, I tell them to remove that sheet and now you can see clearly. Because when you have that sheet, people are gonna go right past you and you're not gonna really see them coming. And that's what happens in that industry. We get an ego and we think we're the best and we don't grow. You gotta be able to read people. You gotta be able to, if they're high here, then you gotta kinda bring them down. If they're low, you gotta bring them up. And once you really give off that energy, then the guard goes down, you know, and that's when you, the sheet has re been removed. I'm kind of curious, Randy, about the coming of VR and AR. How do you see my profession and, and managed profession uh, acclimating and how, what is our position gonna be in the new reality of uh, virtual reality? It's the wild west for everything and you're your own little record company now. You're your own little thing. Nobody's got one job anymore. This is like a new day. It's a good point that for everybody in the room, you got to be everything. You know, the beauty about today, it's a level playing field, right? It's a level playing field. We all got the same tools, same everything. And that just proves again that really it's not about the tools. It's about what we do with them. You know, these are just colors. Can I talk about the uh, DTS experience for a second? Yeah. All right, just imagine a drum set, but there's a drummer in front of you, 20 feet in front of you, and there's a kick, right? And it's right here. And then there's a snare right there, right? Imagine being able to have a kick, and you're wearing headphones, and you hear the kick here, and the snare there, and the hi-hat here, and the toms there, and the cymbals here. You can pan this way, right? What if we can pan this way? Now that is, that changes the whole game. And then of course, yeah, we got this because yeah. we've heard it in surround. We've heard surround here, but in, in stereo, just a pair of headphones, we've never heard that. None of us have heard that, by the way. But being creative with it changes everything. It's like having a TV with the, you know, the rabbit ears and HD. That is a difference. I mean, imagine listening to it where it just goes from stereo to and it, and it explodes. And that, that's, that's really exciting for us. Mixing as we know it today is, going, is about to change uh, in a big way. I'm, I'm curious for both of you if you could answer this question respectively. Who do you count as your mentors in the business? Dave Bansado's here. Uh, yes. Jimbo Borden, for me, personally. I like a lot of producers. There are many, 
Charlie Miner, who I brought up, he was an amazing guy and an amazing influence, you know, as was Harvey Weinstein. I'm a kid from LAUSD, a war refugee from a third world country. I mean, if I didn't have mentors, I wouldn't be here. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's an amazing position to be in. And, and I feel like the older we get, the older I get, I feel the responsibility to, you know, pass some, some knowledge, you know, and, and help wh however we can. It's so important to the people that they give, they give you a break and give you a leg up and help you or give you some information to do that again. See, I had some really friggin' amazing mentors, um, and, but I get them every day. I, I meet them now, and anybody that is successful in their, in their line of work and, and, and has the privilege of making a living by making music, like, I don't even know how this happened. We could be digging ditches, and yet we're making here. music. I know we're doing here. So I will... I will spend the rest of my life talking, listening, helping, making calls for people, but it's, a, it's an obligation as professionals to do it.